Hello friends, welcome back to Civil Engineering Mastery. In this video, we are going to discuss SP34 code. This is the code for reinforcement concrete detailing. When we design any structure, the design output needs to be given in the form of detailing. So that is why structural detailing is very important one. And in order to do the detailing properly, we should know the detailing standards as per SP34. In SP34, we'll be having 14 sections. In that, section 1 and 2 has been already discussed in part one of this video series so now we are going to discuss section 3 so without further delay let's begin now let's start with section 3 structural drawing for detailing so in this section mainly we are going to discuss about how we need to make the drawing like the standard dimensions of the drawing sheet and what are all the formats we have how we need to make the arrangements like if we make the plan section and uh, section details and we will be having the notes key plan everything needs to be arranged in a proper way so that is given in this section what are all the standard procedure to arrange all the details Section 3.1 is telling about the size of drawing. The structural drawing for a large project should generally be of one size for convenience both in the drawing office and on the site. The preferred sizes of drawing sheets are given in table 3.1. In table 3.1, we have the drawing sheet sizes a0 a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 mostly we all know about the size a4 a4 paper size but here we have other sizes as well from it starts from a0 so that is the bigger size there are different between the small size drawing and big size drawing like if you design for a small residential project that is different and if you design for commercial project bigger apartments and all so that will be different so you will you need to make a bigger drawing so in that case you have to use the bigger size of papers the paper dimensions are given here the dimensions recommended for all margins and the divisions of drawing sheets into zones are given in figure 3.1 a to f so the figure shows the dimensions recommended for margin and divisions next we have the title block the title block is an important feature in drawing and it should be placed at the bottom right hand corner of the sheet where it is readily seen and when the prints are folded in the prescribed manner the size of the title block recommended is 185 by 65 mm so when you take the drawing sheet the right hand side so this will be the title block area i'll show you in the diagram so that you will get the better understanding how the title block looks like so there is a format to fold the drawing sheet if you are taking the printout of a to a1 and all so you need to fold it properly in that the title block has to be on the front facing so that when any people open the drawing they will be knowing the particulars of the project like in the title block you will be having the name of the project and then architect consultant name so everything will be come in the title block and then who, who has designed the project what is the revision of drawing so that details and all will comes into the title block separate sheets should be used for each type of structural member or unit so that a floor slab would be detailed on one sheet beams on another and column on a further sheet etc alternatively small jobs each standard size sheet could be used to detail one floor of the structure so that the ground floor slab beams and columns can be detailed on one sheet and the first floor members on another see uh, here what they are trying to say is like separately we need to give the detailing for structural member so that floor slab will be in different sheet and then beams will be in different sheet and columns will be in different sheet whereas for uh, small jobs small projects and all we can do the detailing like ground floor slab beam everything will come in one sheet and then again first floor we need to do it in one sheet next one is layout in layout is given as there cannot be a single standard layout for the detailing of reinforced concrete drawings however it is the usual practice to draw the key plan in the upper left hand corner of the sheet with the elevations and details below and on to the right side of the plan schedules and bending details are placed in the upper right corner of the drawing so figure 3.2 gives a broad outline of layout recommended so if you look into the drawing 3.1a 
here a0 sheet layout has been given so this is the folding mark as i told you before we need to fold the sheet if the drawing is bigger so this is the title block next if you look into the 3.1b that is a1 sheet layout title block is given in the right hand side and then margin and folding mark is given here a2 sheet layout title block folding mark and then size the sheet size is given here the dimensions are in millimeter a3 size a3 size we don't fold actually a4 size is this one so here title block needs to come and in a4 title block needs to be provided here this is for a5 and as we discussed before in figure 3.2 typical layout of a drawing so when you take a drawing the plan needs to be given and sectional details key plan and the schedule notes title block sectional detail so all these details needs to be arranged in one sheet according to the size of the project we can divide the drawings for ground floor slab we can make different drawing and ground floor beam we can make different drawing if it is a small project we can keep ground floor slab beam details in a single drawing so in this way we can make the drawings in section 3.2 we have the scale of the drawing so for plan elevation section as we have seen in the drawing layout plan means we need to set one uh, standard dimension so that is 1 is to 100 or 1 is to 50 and elevation 1 is to 5 1 is to 30 sections 1 is to 50 1 is to 30 1 is to 25 1 is to 20 1 is to 15 and 1 is to 10 next let's look into the information needs to be shown on the structural drawing the overall size of the concrete member shall include the size of any necessary chamfers fillers at corners also exact position shape size and spacing of the reinforcement within the concrete member as well as the required dimension of the concrete cover to the reinforcement shall be given so in any particular drawing if we need to do the corners of the drawing as chambers fillers that needs to be shown and then concrete cover to the reinforcement that also needs to be mentioned in the drawing next notes should be used for freely on detailing drawing so the most important being the bar marks which give information about each or a series of similar reinforcing bars see in the notes the specification needs to be given whole drawing such as specification of the concrete what the concrete grade we are using size of chambers and fillet and concrete cover so that needs to be given as a notes next beam wall slab floor slab and column etc and the main dimension of the structure such as distance between columns height between floors beam and column sizes and floor and wall thickness are calculated by the design engineer shall also be shown on the drawing so these details are needs to be given in the drawing so sections if we provide section that needs to be drawn to at least twice the scale of plans or elevation to which they refer while complicated joints such as may occur at the intersection of columns and beams may detail to larger scale say 1 is to 4 so if we say if we detail any small area of the plan that needs to be scaled properly so then only the detail in the section can be visible in the drawing in addition to that here it is given as structural drawing prepared by the designer shall show details of reinforcement and other information needed for detailing of the reinforcement it also indicate that by separate notes like live load, concrete strength, quality and grade of steel, number of bar to be lapped and the length of the lap. And if necessary, special instruction regarding erection of formwork, fabrication and placing of steel needs to be given in the drawing. These are general informations. You can read it like uh, whatever the details needs to be given in the drawing. So here let's look into the important things. See, symbols and abbreviations. The symbols relating to cross-section shape and size of reinforcement so this symbol indicates the plain round bar and square indicate plain square bar and this symbol indicate the deformed bar and uh, next see uh, symbols relating to shape of the bar along its length we have here alt means alternate bar bent of bar bottom bar minimum maximum and so on 
and here it is given the symbols relating to position and direction next symbols relating to various structural members for example beam column footings slabs lintel next one is symbol abbreviation and notes shall be used in a manner that will not create any ambiguity a few examples for representing diameter spacing and number of bar etc are illustrated below so in the drawing this is very important one the reinforcement bar needs to be represent in this manner like this is this indicates the dia as we have seen here see this indicates the deformed bar so that means 20 mm dia bar at 200 see that is what it is given here 20 mm diameter deformed bar spaced at 20 mm center to center 20 number of 12 mm dia bar 20 numbers of 12 mm dia bar and next here the symbol is given so this is the concrete line thin line and if it is a dashed line it is unexposed to concrete or masonry wall line next one is reinforcement line so that needs to be given in the thicker line and then thick dash line that is reinforcement in different layers section of reinforcing bar that needs to be given in the form of a circle and center line center line needs to be given in this form dimension line concrete beam framing into column which extends through floor and many things are given here see how we need to show the bar reinforcing bar bar with hooks bar with 90 degree bend this is level marking in elevation and level marking in plan we have many symbols like this when we provide the reinforcement in the form of mat so this is bottom mat and this is top mat and in section 3.5 shows the marks for parts of building so when you look into this drawing see here the marks are given that means slab indication is given as sb4 sb7 sb6 and then beam marking is given and uh, if it is a column drawing then you need to mark the columns and footing if it is a footing plan you need to mark the footing so that is given in this drawing figure 3.4 shows the typical marking details for walls so this is wall marking details now let's look into the drawing how the actual drawing structural drawing looks like as we have seen in the code right side corner we need to provide the title block title block will be having the uh, revision date and description and project name and drawing title and then uh, these are all simple details like drawing number scale who has designed who has drawn and these details will be given in the title block and this is the notes as we have discussed see in the note the dimensions are in feet and inches that means the dimensions of the drawing whatever we have given here that needs to be mentioned in notes and uh, we are not supposed to scale the drawing so whatever the dimensions are given in the drawing we need to work on that and then SBC of soil is given depth of excavation the building is designed for uh, how many floors that is given and then grade of concrete grade of steel and uh, cover to the reinforcement footings columns so these are all the major things which needs to be mentioned in notes and here we have the excavation plan so footing drawing we have in footing drawing the footing size is given and then column number footing number everything is marked and this is the plan a typical section is given here so this section details in that also all the dimensions required dimensions are marked in the section and this these are all smaller details like if you want to give any particular details that is given here and then footing and column schedule tables are given here. in this way you need to arrange the drawing next we have one more drawing so this is the beam layout plinth layout so in this see layout is also given here and then details are given here the beam details reinforcement details are given here. so as we have seen we need to fix the scale according to the code we need to fix the scale of this drawing because this is a plan right for plan different scale we need to give and for section for details different scale we need to give so in the details the rentaya of the bar and then number of bars and uh, dimensions are given spacing dimensions are given i hope you all like this video please do comment in the comment box if you like the the content kindly share it with your friends and also don't forget to subscribe this channel thank you for watching